Greetings, my comrades, and welcome back to Zonolith. Today, we are going to be continuing on with our rewritten Unova journey in part three of the What If I Wrote Pokemon the Series Black and White series. Last time, we covered all the events up to where Silent joined our team, and this time, we will be covering all the events until the beginning of the second gym badge. So, the second gym badge is where we are going to pick up next time with part four. Again, my name is Zonolith. And enjoy the video. events to discuss after the first gym badge. We are still in Striaton City, and the first event is the Dream Yard Incident. Professor Juniper states that Ash and Co. should check out Professor Fennel's research while they are in Striaton City, and after learning about Fennel's research on dreams, dream energy readings skyrocket and Fennel states something must be going down at the Dream Yard. If you guys have played the Black and White 1 games, then you would know that when the group goes there, they head to the Dream Yard and they see a Muna getting beat by Team Plasma who plan to use the Muna's Dream Mist to cause people to have dreams that will make them want to release their Pokemon. After defeating them, the Musharna, who resides in the Dream Yard, uses the illusion from the games. I'm obviously referring to the one where Getsis multiplies himself and he says he's gonna punish them and whatnot. And this obviously causes the Grunts to get scared and causes them to retreat. And after this event, the police become more suspicious of Team Plasma's activities. The second event is when Hilda wants a cross transceiver and the new model is coming out and she really wants one. Again, if you guys don't remember what a cross transceiver is, it is the communications device from the Unova region. When she gets to the store, there is only one left in stock. However, before she can purchase it, another trainer enters the building, also wanting a cross transceiver. And this is none other than Hilda's childhood friend, Charon. Hilda's childhood friend and main rival for the series. Charon is a director and wants to enter the Directors Festival in Burbank City. He is very full of himself, but is also very supportive of his friends. Since both of them want the device, they decide to battle for it, with Charon using his partner Duwat and Hilda using her Tepig. This is Hilda's first official battle in the series. Hilda goes in for the offensive, but Duwat is just a lot more experienced and a lot more agile. Since this is also Tepig's first official battle against another trainer, with the obvious exception of Team Rocket, Charon and Duwat are easily able to overpower her and Tepig, and sadly it ends in defeat for Tepig due to her lack of experience when it comes to Pokemon battles. Sharon ends up with the cross transceiver, but this gets Hilda even more determined to one day defeat Sharon, setting up their rivalry for the rest of the series. And finally, we have one last event, where Team Rocket meets up with a new Rocket agent by the name of Pierce to discuss Team Rocket's Operation Sun, which will come into fruition later on in the series. Now, the group is finally on their way to Nacarine City, and on their way there, we have a lot of events to cover. The first being another interaction with Team Plasma at a Pokemon daycare where the three decide to help out at. After this event, Hilda is given a Pokemon egg by the one who runs the daycare. So now Hilda has a Pokemon egg in her possession, and it will later on become a Pokemon that will join her team. 
Next up, our group is on the way to Nakarin when they encounter a Pokemon trainer who Hilda definitely recognizes. This trainer is none other than Hilbert, Hilda's older brother who left on his journey half a year before Hilda. Similar to Ash, his goal is also to win the Unova League. He then shows the group that he already has six badges, and this gets Ash super stoked to battle him. Ash challenges Hilbert and his partner Pig Knight to a battle, however before he can set up a Pokemon, Oshawa comes out of his Pokeball all by his own, wanting to battle Hilbert's Pig Knight. The battle is now on. Oshawa tries to hold his own against Pig Knight, using its type advantage as its main advantage in this battle. However, Hilbert's battling style is very aggressive, and Pig Knight counters the type matchup with brute force and aggression. Ashton tries to counter using even more offense, but Pig Knight is just too strong and powerful and ends up overpowering Oshawa, which leads to Oshawa losing the battle. Oshawa, after losing, now has a main rival for the series and a goal of now to best Pig Knight in a battle one day. Hilbert then decides to camp out with the group for the night, and this leads to another interaction between him and Ash during the night while everyone else is asleep, where Ash learns Hilbert's motivation for being a Pokemon trainer. Hilbert explains to Ash that before he left on his journey, he really wasn't proud of himself. He felt like he did nothing during his childhood and that his life really wasn't going anywhere. He then states how he left on a journey to become someone not only his family and friends could be proud of, but someone he could be proud of. Someone that he wanted to be and someone that he just really wanted to admire. He wanted to become that person. Ashton declares that one day they will meet at the Unova League and that he will beat him. Hilbert laughs and accepts Ash's challenge, and the next day, Hilbert is gone before the group even wakes up. But now Ash has one more rival in the Unova region. Now, we have a couple of captures for our main group to cover. Ash, after outsmarting a sassy Snivy, ends up catching it and adding it to his team. So now Ash has P. Dove, Oshawa, Pikachu, and now Snivy, very similar to the original canon. This capture happens pretty much the same way as the original, and Silent also catches his Dwebble in the same way as the original anime as well. So now Silent has Pansage, and he has his Dwebble, once again, very similar to the official canon. Now we get to the first Pokemon Evaluathon. In case you guys have forgotten what a Pokemon Evaluathon is, I will briefly go over the Evaluathons once again. The Pokemon Evaluathons are a series of competitions that happen throughout Unova. Pokemon connoisseurs compete in several different challenges throughout the Unova region to evaluate the bond between a trainer and their Pokemon. Depending on your place in the competition, it will award you with a certain amount of points, and the five connoisseurs with the most points at the end of the season compete in the Master Evaluation, a harder version of an Evaluathon with three different challenges. The winner of that competition is then declared an S-Class Connoisseur, and Silent enters his first one on his way to Nacarine along with Ash and Hilda, but before he can enter, he comes across Burgundy, Silent's main rival who decides to become a Pokemon connoisseur after losing to Silent in a gym battle. She wants to outshine Silent and get her revenge against him. Anyway, now on to the first Evaluathon. The challenge this time around was to evaluate the bond between a normal person and their Pokemon on a stage. So, people in Pokemon would perform different tasks together showcasing their bond, and the connoisseurs would have to evaluate that bond, and the person who had the best evaluation would be awarded the most amount of points, obviously winning that Evaluathon. After an entire day of analyzing the different people and Pokemon, Silent comes out on top with the number one spot, with Burgundy almost winning in second place. Burgundy, enraged by her loss, challenges Silent to a battle with her new partner for this rewrite, Sawsbuck. Silent, similar to the original, is able to overcome Burgundy and her Pokemon in battle. Silent then tells her that instead of getting mad over her loss, she needs to learn from it, and that before she can become a better connoisseur, she needs to learn how to do that first. She needs to learn how to accept a loss. Burgundy, while mad, is now more determined than ever to beat Silent. After this, our group finally arrives in Nakarine City, and the group heads to the Pokemon Center to rest. 
This is where they once again run into Ash's rival, Trip. Trip then asks Ash for a battle, and this battle goes a lot different than their first battle in the series. Ash starts off the battle with P Dove, and it goes up against Trip's Tranquil. Unlike last time when Ash was using Pikachu, Ash is now using a Pokemon who has had not as much experience as Ash's Pikachu, and is on the same level of experience as Trip's Tranquil. It then becomes an aerial battle of power, and Tranquil overpowers P Dove. Ash then sends in Snivy. He uses a track to confuse Tranquil, and then uses attack to take down Trips. Trip then sends out his Ace. Servine and proves just how much stronger he has become. Every attack that Ash sends at Servine, Trip is able to find a counter for. He truly shows just how much he knows about Pokemon battles here, and Trip is then able to take out Ash's Snivy. Trip has fully proven to Ash that at least this time around, his analytical battling style has overpowered Ash's years of experience. Trip then shakes Ash's hand, thanking him for the battle, declaring that he has officially surpassed him. Ash, being Ash, would not let this slide, and he states that he will defeat Trip next time they have a battle. Ash decides he wants to go heal up his Pokemon after the battle against Trip when he hears a clapping noise as N walks into the arena, asking Ash if he can talk while he gets his Pokemon healed. This leads to once again another mental conflict between Ash and N. N then tells Ash he is conflicted, and he doesn't know if the truth he has found is the correct one. He tells Ash that he's somewhat of an enigma to him, and thought it'd be best to ask Ash for some advice. He then once again explains his mentality, sending Ash once again into a rage, telling N that he doesn't understand him and that Pokemon and humans love each other, and although they may not be together in the past, N can't just force people and Pokemon to be separated from each other now when they finally come together. N then laughs evilly. He apologizes for the outburst and says he has finally found his answer. That in order to truly separate Pokemon and people, he needs power to enforce his truth. He needs a strong ally. He needs Reshiram. Ash, confused, asks what Reshiram is, and Silent explains the history of the Unova region. How once a long time ago, two princes once controlled two mighty dragons. Reshiram and Zekrom, and how their battle ended with the two dragons being sealed away in two different stones. N then says farewell to the trio as he leaves with a satisfied look on his face. And as soon as he leaves, Ash breaks down into tears, refusing to accept N's views and how it goes against all of his ideals. Now everyone, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that is sadly where we are going to end things off for today. Next time, during part 4, we will start off with the battle against Unova's second gym leader, Lenora. If you guys did enjoy this part of the rewrite, please tell me what you guys did enjoy in the comment section down below. And if you guys did enjoy the video, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications to never miss an upload, and to share these videos out there with friends so they can come here and join me for my journey. Also, please go follow me on my Twitter page if you want to see more of me. And once again, my name is Zonalith, and I'll catch you guys next time.